In this video, I'll be explaining the concept of mechanical potential energy and non-conservative forces. First, it is important to note that mechanical potential energy is dependent upon position. Potential energy, as we just pointed out, is energy associated with an object's position. Potential energy is stored energy that has yet to be released. However, it cannot be measured directly. Only changes in potential energy can be measured. Gravitational potential energy is specifically based on the height of an object above a zero level. The equation for gravitational potential energy is shown here. We can see that the mass of the object, force of gravity, and how high above a zero level the object is directly affects the resulting potential energy. Here's a simulation of this concept. In this King Dakar simulation, the train car is launched from the starting gate with an initial velocity giving it kinetic energy, as you can see. This energy allows the car to climb up the track. As it climbs higher, the PE gets greater. At its highest peak, the train car has the most potential energy. As it descends, the potential energy converts to kinetic, provided there are no non-conservative forces. However, we all know that forces such as friction and air resistance do exist, and these forces impact the car. The other type of mechanical potential energy is elastic. This type of potential energy is based on the position of a stretched object, such as a spring. The equation for elastic potential energy is shown here. Note that this type of mechanical potential energy is dependent upon a constant k, which is different for every spring, and x, the distance the spring is stretched or compressed from its normal position. Now to relate the idea of work to energy. What's shown here is known as the work energy theorem. You will use this equation if there is some sort of applied force, like a push or a pull, or friction, that would prevent the perfect transfer from potential energy to kinetic energy, the energy of motion. 